In this video, we're looking at isometries. We're looking at the final type of isometry, a translation. And we're also looking at a little bit at the algebra for using all these rules to do transformations for reflections, rotations, or translations. Remember that these are special because they preserve congruence. When you reflect an object, you produce a congruent image. When you rotate a figure, you produce a congruent image. And when you translate a figure, you produce a congruent image. Okay, we're going to translate triangle DEF. And we're going to do it with a translation operation. This translation transformation uses angular brackets instead of smooth parentheses because we want it to look different from a point. A point has these smooth parentheses. A transformation has these angular ones. And what the transformation says is, take every x value and add 2, take every y value and subtract 7. Transformations can have any numbers in here. I could have subtracted 99 and added 1,000, but that would have been harder to graph. So in this case, I added 2 to the x value for d to get d prime. 4 plus 2 is 6 and I subtracted 7 to get the y value for d prime. 7 minus 7 is 0. I did the same thing for the other points. 2 plus 2 is 4. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. And finally for f prime, 2 plus 2 is 4. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. And they're graphed over here. A translation just moves the figure in a particular direction. And we can figure out the direction easily by using this transformation definition to create what we call a vector. So I graph negative 2, no, positive 2, I'm sorry, positive 2, negative 7 right over here. And then I draw an arrow from 0, 0. And this shows you the distance I'm going and what angle I'm going. Triangle DEF moved 7 down and 2 across for every point. F goes 7 down and 2 across. E goes 7 down and 2 across. They all moved as if this vector were applied to them each individually. Okay, finally, we're just going to go over some of the algebra of these rules to make sure that we understand how to apply them. When we looked at these reflections, we said that the rule for reflecting over the y-axis was that x comma y went to negative x comma y. This doesn't mean that the x-coordinate becomes negative. It simply means that whatever the old x-coordinate was, we multiply that by negative 1. So if we started out with the point 3 comma 16, we took the x-coordinate, multiplied by negative 1, negative 3, and we left the y-coordinate the same. However, if the x-coordinate was already negative 3, when we multiply that by negative 1, we get positive 3. Again, we're multiplying this x by negative 1, and we're leaving the y alone. In this case, 3 is positive, we multiply it by negative 1, and we get negative 3. And we leave the y alone, even though it happens to also be negative. We don't change the y. We don't change the y, whether it's positive or negative, and whatever x is, positive or negative, we multiply it by negative 1. Similarly, this rule that reflects over the x-axis, x, y goes to x, comma, negative y, we leave the x alone, whether it's positive or negative, and here 100 gets multiplied by negative 1. In this case, the x is positive and the y is already negative, but the rule says leave x alone and multiply y by negative 1. Negative 100 times negative 1 is positive 100. Finally, we leave x alone here, even though x is already negative, and we multiply 100 by negative 1.
the rule that takes us in a reflection over the line y equals x simply switches the y and x, the x and y values, and it doesn't matter who's positive and who's negative. 3 comma 11 goes to 11 comma 3. Negative 2, negative 4 goes to negative 4 comma negative 2. We don't care if they're positive or negative. And if they're both the same, well, switching them doesn't do a thing. Remember, in these reflections, if you're on the line of reflection, you don't move. Okay, um, I'll finally, I'll just review these ideas one more time for a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise. Here we are switching the x and the y, and then taking the new x value and multiplying it by negative 1. So, I'm switching 17 and 5, and I'm taking the new x value and multiplying it by negative 1. Again, now I'm switching the x and y values, but this number is already negative. Does that mean I don't multiply by negative 1? Of course not. I still multiply by negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 17 is positive 17. Now 2, 2, when I switch them, I still get 2, 2, but I multiply this new x value by negative 1. Here's just a summary of how transformations work. If you have the transformation 2 comma 6 on any point x, y, you add 2 to all the x values in your transformation and 6 to all the y values. If instead you have negative 2 comma 1, I'm not sure you can see this one, then you're going to subtract 2 from all your x values and you're going to add 1 to all your y values. This is the end of the videos on isometries, transformations that preserve congruence.